All right, guys, I'm about to do my very first screen uh, cast using Screencastify, so bear with me, uh, and I'll do my best to try to make this as smooth as possible. My goal for this activity is for you to actually see the five main elements that we talked about in class. We took notes from our, on our page 29 out of our binder, um, which are symbolism, caption and labels, analogy, irony, and exaggeration. And I want to be able to point these elements out to you using a very current political cartoon. So let's get started. The first one on page 29 in your notes is symbolism. That's when you use an object um, to stand for an idea or possibly a group or possibly a specific person. So some of the symbols that we've already discussed in class are being used on purpose by the cartoonist. I want to go ahead and point a couple of those out. We already know that the elephant is a symbol for the Republican Party. Another symbol that is found in this political cartoon is the baseball. and the pitcher's mound. Now, the next thing would be captioning and labels. And you'll notice that we've got a caption here in the speech bubble, which says, okay, who wants to pitch next? Obviously, the elephant is supposed to be a baseball coach and he's yelling into the bullpen for a new pitcher. Also, and you may not know this, but on his piece of paper in his hand, it says GOP roster. GOP stands for Grand Old Party, which is a nickname for the Republican Party. So that just solidifies the fact that this elephant here is representing the Republican Party. Okay. Now, I want to go to some irony here. Irony is when you see a difference between the way things are and the way things are expected to be. Now, I see as a viewer two examples of irony, and one of them might be a little bit of a stretch, but I think the other one. Um, is pretty obvious, especially if you understand the background to this current event, which sometimes not everybody knows, so it makes it more difficult to understand the, uh, the author's message. And I'll try to um, convey that message for you and help you out if you're not sure what's going on in the world today in American government. Now, back to the irony. I believe that there's irony with the fact that the Republican Party was very critical of this symbol here. Here's another symbol, actually. This guy is supposed to be John Boehner, who was or is the Speaker of the House, which is the main position in the House of Representatives, which is part of Congress. So it's ironic that people in Congress that were in the Republican Party were criticizing one of their own Republican Republicans um, for the job that they were doing as the leader of the House of Representatives. And it got to the point where he felt enough pressure to resign from the position and quit. Well, it's ironic that the coach actually has to ask for somebody to come up and pitch and there's really nobody to call on. So the critics of John Boehner aren't stepping up to take the position and do the job that they think can be done better without John Boehner in there. Okay. So there's some irony there. It's also ironic that in Congress, 
in the Senate and the House, and this is really focused on the House of Representatives, that they're, those people that are there and elected are there to represent their constituents, the people, us, you, me. And this is one of the most sought after positions in the House, because if you're the leader of the House, you have a lot of power. You have the power to introduce bills, and that'll make more sense when we get into the legislative process. And you can kind of control what bills and ideas are going to be um, discussed and what which ones are going to be ignored. So if you have something, um, somebody from your state thinks an issue is really important, you have the ability to present that to everybody else. So you would think, at least I would, that somebody that has a that has a shot to fill this position and to really get their point across and their constituents' points across and their wants and needs would step up and take that position. So I think there's two examples of irony here. Now, um, some exaggeration. It's very exaggerated, John Boehner being carried out on a stretcher. He wasn't that exhausted or um, done with the job that he needed to be carried out on a stretcher. It's just trying to drive him to the point that He's fed up. He's done. All right. He's done all he can do. Get somebody else in there. And that's the exaggeration here. There are people in the Republican Party that are part of the House of Representatives. So really, the roster shouldn't be blank. But the artist, the, the cartoonist is just trying to drive him the point that, look, nobody's stepping up. You know, so is there anybody out there that wants to take this position? And the cartoonist doesn't think so. Um, with all this said, I want to go back to these symbols. I think the, the pitching mound is kind of representative of the, the seat that the Speaker of the House sets in at the House of Representatives when, that, when the House of Representatives is in session. He's kind of center stage, leading the thing, controlling, and the pitcher is the one who uh, kind of sets the tone and controls the game, especially on, on defense. All right. The ball could represent the ideas of the House, the, the Speaker of the House, the um, ideas for, for new laws and new policies, just like the pitcher presents different pitches um, to the opposition, um, to the batter. So that's where I think the symbolism lies in these two items here. Okay, It might be a little bit of a stretch, but I'm just really trying to illustrate the different elements that the cartoonist is providing. And then the last element would be the analogy. And the analogy that um, the cartoonist is trying to portray is the Speaker of the House resigning and being replaced or the need to replace him is like a pitcher in a baseball game that's done for the game and needs relief. And this coach here like the Republican Party, is looking for relief, but there's really nobody on the roster willing to set up. And that kind of goes along with the message. All right. So hopefully you have a better understanding of the elements that are um, used in a political cartoon. And I hope you agree that this political cartoon shows all five. If you've got any questions about the elements, Come see me, ask me in class, um, and I'll do what I can to help you out and to clarify things.